Good morning and welcome to the Swimming Pool Church. It's wonderful to have you here again today. God bless you for tuning in and God bless you for sharing this message with your friends and your family. Uh, the purpose of this message is again, once again, encouragement. And I always try to hear if the Lord is saying something in the morning to me, then I try and share it. If there's nothing, then there's nothing. So that it's not every day that I have this. I also try and do it in different languages so that I don't alienate uh, the English or the Afrikaans, but I can actually minister in both languages. And I talk English very deliciously. <laughs> I'm just joking. Uh, that was just a joke. But um, yes, yeah, so sometimes we do get it a bit mixed up in the English language, but I'm sure that you will understand and that God will bless you and that He will touch you with this message today. Uh, I really believe that um, I speak from my life experience. I don't speak from something that I read or something that I got online. I speak from what I experience. And yesterday I had two ladies that I ministered with. And again, as I've said to you before, we, uh, we have a business and, and we are involved in business. So I didn't go out to minister in the sense of having an evangelistic outreach or anything like that. But I've, uh, I was just ministering in the wake of, of business activities because in Him we live and move and have our being. So we should flow in the love of Christ and we should flow in, in, in uh, just in, in, in our evangelism. should be a flow of our lifestyle, not, not an event, but a lifestyle. So as I was talking with them, I, I found both of them actually tearing up and, and, and sort of almost crying uh, because of the situations that they are facing currently. And the strangest thing is, as I spoke to my suppliers, I heard the same thing. As I spoke to some people who are in my industry, I heard the same thing. And then I've been exposed to some pastors and speaking to some pastors. And it's actually shocking the amount of stress that, that they're under and, and even uh, the snappiness of their temperaments. And, and um, everywhere I go, I see this wake, this cloud hanging over people. And I was thinking, you know, I mean, if we are in a difficult period, if we are in a difficult season as the body of Christ, uh, how is the church to respond? What is the church to do? And, you know, I, I was thinking about uh, history in school, which took me quite a number of years back. But I was thinking about history in school. And I remember reading my history book and thinking about Hitler's advance in Europe. Now, Hitler wants to take over the entire Europe after World War I. And uh, he starts by occupying certain countries. You know, he, he, he takes uh, uh, Czechoslovakia, I think, and uh, Studietaland and those areas. He starts taking them uh, year, year from, I think, 1938 onwards. And the world is just watching and, and warning him and telling him, don't do this, don't be a naughty boy, but he's doing it. And in the background, uh, he's building an army uh, in excess of, of, I think it was 2 million people. So he's building this huge army. He's occupying territory and the world is trying to avoid the inevitable, the war. And this is sort of, it started sticking to my heart and I started thinking about this. How many Christians, now that war has come to our doorstep and now that we've been attacked, I mean, Christians are dying left, right and center, sadly. Uh, Christians are closing their businesses. We are under financial attack. Churches are in dire straits. Uh, yesterday I spoke to somebody that said that the, the church has received a summons uh, for um, the, the bond. And if they can't pay, uh, the banks are going to take the church building. So what has happened here? I mean, Hitler and them uh, the, and the world had the history of the First World War where I think about 20 million people died. And, and it was a devastating war. And and that nobody wanted that to happen again. But then we have World War II coming where 85 million people died. And the world doesn't stop uh, Hitler early enough. And, and he builds this war machine in the German Reich. He builds this war machine and he attacks the world because occupation was allowed in many areas. And um, this is sort of what, what also, when I looked at this in the physical eye, I thought, uh, you know, how does this work? Because in the spiritual, we see the same thing. And when we are under attack, when for us, when, when we have to fight certain elements, certain things in our lives, we're sitting in a situation where we have to make a decision. What are we going to do? How are we going to handle things? And that is what sort of this made me think of. I was just thinking of the warfare that we are in. And then David was in a similar situation in Psalm 18. Uh, he writes after, you know, his, his situation with Saul. 
He says, the Lord is my rock and my fortress, my deliverer. My God is my rock in, in whom I take refuge, my shield. Um, you, you know, he, he says, my trust is in the Lord. He says, the cords of death entangled me and the, and the torrents of destruction overwhelmed me. The cords of the grave coiled around me. The snares of death confronted me. In my distress, I called to the Lord. I cried out to God for help. So this is sort of progressive in the psalm. He, he says, I was in this difficult situation. I was in this difficult season. And I started crying out to God. And, and then he, he starts telling in the psalm how God is great. And the fire comes from his nostrils. And there's an earthquake and all of that. So he starts describing God's power. But then he says something very, very profound in, in verse 38. He says, he trains my hands for battle. He trains my hands for battle. Which talks about enablement. It talks about an enablement that the church has to fight the enemy. And even in the circumstances, although we look at the situations around us and we see devastation, uh, we see economic difficulty, we see physical illness, we see all of those things. The fact is that the church has had its hands trained for war. The church is ready to face this enemy. But now the church needs to move into attack. The other day I said attack your lack. The church needs to get into attack mode. And stop going in defense mode where we are just defending. Where we're just trying to defend off the enemy. And we're just trying to fend the enemy and fight against the enemies. No, we have to attack. We have to attack. The church has been trained for warfare. But it's sometimes the persecution, the difficulty, the things that we face that get us into that position where we have no choice. Like David with Saul. I mean, he had no choice. He, he was speaking to God and... And saying, Lord, you my God, I trust in you. And, and then he comes to this conclusion in verse 38 where he says, He trains my hands for war. And your hands have been trained for war. Your hands, my hands, we've been trained for war. Now many of us might not have been trained in the word of God. Because we need to get the word of God inside of us. We need the shield of faith. We need the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. And the shield of faith is built by the word of God. So our protection and our attack weapon, both of them are connected to God's word. They're connected to God's word. And if you've not been in a, in a word-based church, if you've not sat under the word, if you've not studied the word, if you've, you've not studied to show yourself approved, if you've not become effective and productive in your knowledge of Christ, uh, you might be like a sitting duck where the weapons are lying around you, but you don't know what to do with them. Have you ever uh, seen somebody try to fire a, a, a gun or try to use a weapon without being trained to use the weapon? So it's one thing to have your hands trained, but the fact is your hands talks about the, the capability that God will give you. But the, but the training that you have to train yourself is you have to train yourself in the word of God so that you know how to respond to the situations and to the circumstances. So as Christians, although what I'm seeing in the church and what I'm seeing when I speak to Christians, they are processing what's happening in their lives and the difficulty, the stress, the pressure, the things that they're facing, they're processing this. Many of them coming to the wrong conclusions where they're saying, oh, well, you know what? Uh, we, maybe we should just ask God for more power. Maybe we should ask God for something more. Uh, you know, if you really understand the word, you've got everything that you already need in the power of the Holy Spirit that resides within you. But you have to know the word. You have to know what the word says because people are perishing for a lack of knowledge. And we have to have the knowledge of the word. We have to know the truth. The Bible says you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. That truth is only established in discipleship when we follow Christ. And unfortunately... That church as an organized institution has become uh, more focused on other things than warfare. Because actually, I mean, we've, we wanted to build the perfect world. Let's be honest, all of us, the, the economists, the politicians, different countries in the world, all of us, we've joined hands, we've tried to eradicate this, tried to eradicate that, tried to come up with the best possible health systems, tried to come up with the best possible economic systems try to address poverty try to address drug addiction uh, there's been uh, campaigns launched every way to fight crime in this country that country to uplift countries there's been a lot of things in the world that's happened initiatives for years where we've tried to create heaven on earth but the bible says us that it will never be heaven on earth 
The Bible teaches us that as the end time comes closer on the prophetic timeline, there will be an escalation of disasters, of things that happen over this world. Uh, this is prophesied. It, it's, it's the world being in, in, in labor pains. And as iniquity increases, this is just my theology, as iniquity increases, as the adversity in the world increases, as sin increases, the world is starting to abrupt. And also demonic forces are, are gaining more territory. As we've removed God out of the school, we've removed God out of certain areas of society, uh, we've become postmodern, accepting everything. And, and basically saying, we can say nothing is wrong, everything is okay. If it's okay for you, it's okay. This is the, the, the postmodern slogan. And we've accepted that and we've said that, but it's caused corruption from within where we are not ready. Our hands might be trained for war, but we're not ready for the war. God might, as, might have given us the capacity and the capabilities as Christians by the power of the Holy Spirit to defeat the enemy and to, to rule and reign with Christ in this life. But we're not doing it because we're not trained. We're not ready for it. We weren't ready for it. And when the bomb hit, when the first shot was fired, we weren't ready. And many Christians have actually become very upset. And like I said, I speak to people and I love them. And I understand because we're all going through that kind of pressure. But I said yesterday to somebody, I said, it's breathing underwater time now. It's the time when we as the church, we start walking in the supernatural. Now, this is not new to the church of Jesus Christ. We've done this for many years and many seasons. We've had to stand upon God's word. We've had to survive and thrive. And let me end off with this scripture in Acts. So I'm asking the question, what effect has adversity got on the church normally? Well, obviously, if, if it's not a real follower of Christ, if, if the work is not built with gold and silver, but it's built with stubble, it will burn away. But if it's a real follower of Christ, it will actually cause three effects. And let me tell you, I'm taking this from the book of Acts as I'm ending off. And we have to look at these things. We have to look at these things very very seriously now we cannot as the church of jesus christ at this stage of the game start getting into all sort of little theories and ideas and and that we have to get to the root cause and to the word and we have to ask ourselves what is really happening here what have we got as the church what power has the gospel have in this situation if we preach the gospel in this situation what power does that gospel yield we have to start manifesting the supernatural there must be, like I said the other day, there must be power in the pulpit. Not just persuasion, not just finesse, not just charisma, but power. There has to be power. We have to have a calling if we are ministering. Many people ministering now, you have to ask yourself the question, have you got a calling from Jesus? Because if you have a calling, the calling will be confirmed by the power. There has to be power. Jesus said, wait in Jerusalem until you are endured with power from on high. And it is through that power that the word of God is activated in our hands. Then I can say that our hands are truly trained for the battle. We are truly trained for the warfare. And then I can say that we rule and reign with Christ in this world, in this life. So Acts chapter 8, verse 1. Saul approved the killing of Stephen. On that day, a great persecution broke out against the church in Jerusalem, and all except the apostles were scattered throughout Judea and Samaria. Now, it was the persecution, the attack that the enemy launched, that put the church back against the wall into the position of attacking. Into the position of attacking, and I'll, I'll read that for you now. So, think of this. When the, when, when, when the enemy attacks, uh, in, 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 in army they always said, you draw fire. When the enemy attacks, he is drawing fire. When coronavirus comes and, and, and the devil kills people left, right and center, and COVID-19 is, is sweeping across the nation, the, the enemy is drawing the church's fire. The enemy is drawing. When economic difficulty comes and the church cannot pay its bills, the Christians cannot pay their bills. The enemy is drawing fire. And our response 
should be accordingly. As warriors, as soldiers in the army of God, our response should be accordingly. And if we've been trained for battle, if we know what we are supposed to do in this warfare, we will now enter into attack mode. We will reclaim what the enemy has taken from us maybe in this year. But more than that, we will also take back what the enemy was holding on. Maybe we've been avoiding those wars. Maybe we've been avoiding those battles. We've, we've said to, to Hitler, you can take this country, take that country, take this country, take this country. We'll leave you for now. And maybe we've allowed the enemy to take too much because we've avoided war. But the fact is war is inevitable. War is inevitable. You cannot avoid war. There's no way you can avoid what's happening here. This is happening with or without you. And we have to now decide how are we going to respond. And this is how the church responded there. It says they were, they were first of all, they were, the persecution scattered the members. But the apostles were still in a central location. And what I saw here was that the move of God that he's going to be doing now is going to be through the people. It's going to be through you and me. Not necessarily a pulpit move, but a people move. A move that is in the marketplace. A move that is wherever you are residing, wherever you are working, God is going to use you. He's trained your hands for battle and you are going to possess the land. Not just what the enemy has taken from you the last year, but you are going to possess what he has taken from you the previous 5 or 12 years. You are going to take that back because he, he has gone too far by attacking God's children. And now we are going to possess. So what happens here? Those who had been scattered preach the word wherever they went. So when, when you are scattered, when you are even feeling depressed and down and, and you don't know where you're going, you preach the word wherever you go. You preach the word because the word is the gospel. It's the good news of Jesus Christ. It's the finished work of the cross that you preach. Philip went down to the city of Samaria and he proclaimed the Messiah there. So here he proclaims Messiah. He proclaims what Yeshua HaMashiach Messiah did on the cross. He proclaims this. The atonement, the full price paid. He proclaims this. Now he preaches and proclaims. And this is what we need to do. We, we can preach, uh, but we also have to proclaim. We also have to speak. We also have to command things. We have to uh, talk to those things. This is how our hands have been trained for war. We have to do this as the church. The church is God's oracle voice on earth. So if God wants to say something, He's going to say it through a living being, a living soul that's in this body. He's going to use this body, this temple, to proclaim it. And this is what the church did. What, were, what, what was the result? The result was when the crowd heard and saw the signs performed, they paid close attention to what he said. For with shrieks, impure spirits came out of many, and many who were paralyzed and lame were healed. So there was great joy in the city. Now, persecution turns to joy when we respond in a biblical way. Listen, persecution turns, turns to joy when we respond in a biblical way because persecution mixed with God's gospel with the word with the proclamation of God's word turns into the miraculous we step into the miraculous power so there, there are three things that I just wanted to end off with and mention to you as far as this is concerned I want to just say to you that God has trained your hands for warfare and by studying the word of God and studying the promises of God and asking the Holy Spirit to quicken those promises in your heart, you will step into warrior mode and you will start possessing the land. And these are the things that, that, that happened in the first church because of persecution, because of adversity, because of difficulty. And these are the same things that happen when we as the church act according to God's word, when we align ourselves with heavenly purpose. Number one, expansion. And that means territory is enlarged. Territory is enlarged. Now, we've, we've, we've heard Dr. Bruce Wilkinson praying the Jabez prayer of enlarging your territory and that. But let me tell you, now at this stage, it's going to be the proclamation of that territory and, and stepping into that territory that's going to possess that. So we have to expand the territory. The second thing that happens is the increase in power. 
So all of a sudden, power is no longer a nice to have. It's a requirement. If somebody, if a family member of you becomes ill now, becomes infected with this coronavirus, you have to take authority. That person has to take authority and power is required. This is not power that's a nice to have, maybe, maybe not. No, this is a life and death power. So we need to then speak life over that situation and then functioning increase. So expansion, increase and function. And the functioning is in the supernatural dimension where we start functioning in the supernatural power of God. So let me proclaim to you today that God has trained your hands for the battle. And now if it's to be, it's up to me. You and I have to take authority now in our lives. We have to train ourselves in the word of God. We have to become equipped so that we can be productive and effective in our knowledge of Christ and that we can occupy what God has for us. Don't allow the devil to steal from you anymore. Not today. And don't stop. You know what the, the, the Lord in the Old Testament, when Israel, when they fought an enemy, the Lord would instruct them to pursue the enemy and not stop when the enemy was on the run, but to continue and then to plunder the enemy. And this is what I want to say to the church. God didn't just train your, your hands for battle for self-defense. He trained your hands for battle to possess. You were trained to possess. And it doesn't look like it now. I mean, I'm sure if you are like many of the Christians that I've met, you, you're saying, I can't even think of possessing now. I'm just thinking of holding on to what I have. Just thinking of to, just to hold it together. But it's not, it's not the real reality. The real reality is that you are born again, spiritful. You have the authority of the Holy Spirit and you've got heaven's authority behind you. And even though the enemy can throw all sorts of smoke screens and things around you that make it look bad, it's not bad until you think it's bad. It's not bad until you allow it to be bad. You have to take the authority as a Christian over those situations. This is something that, we, that I've been exercising for many years through many different little things that I've gone through, but at least I've been preparing myself. I'm not perfect in those areas. I've learned a lot. But the past 12 years, I've been, like I said in the previous message, breathing under the water. I've seen that even if it looks like you're sinking, even if it looks like there's nothing left, the word of God is still true. And even if, if it's like Lazarus, four days in the grave and you say it's too late, it's never too late for God. So I want to encourage you today that you, in, that you strengthen yourself in your inner man by taking in the implanted word into your spirit that you fill yourself with God's word with God's promises that you avoid negative speaking on your tongue and that you start proclaiming what God has for you and that you start possessing what God has for you and that you start taking back what the enemy has stolen from you for so so many years I know it's not easy I know it's a difficult time we're all facing difficulty right now but we are seeing the miraculous power of the Lord work like never ever before don't react to the circumstances and to the situations even if you pray for something and it doesn't happen or the opposite happens still rejoice because you will see the breakthrough a few days ago I lost a big deal and I just I didn't even say anything to anybody I was I was a bit discouraged in my heart because I thought this deal was going to help me a bit but then I just left it and I just spoke the word. I just continued to preach. I just continued to spread the gospel. I just continued to worship. And what happened was God gave me more. God gave me more and he will give you more. Just stand on the word. Your hands have been trained. You are ready for this battle. Now fill yourself with God's word. Don't fill yourself with other stuff. Fill yourself with God's word so that you can respond to the enemy. But more than that, that you can start attacking attacking your lack start attacking those things that you know that are not from God in your life don't just accept them don't allow them like Hitler to just move in and move in and take more occupation and take more occupation until you've got a big war on your hand uh, just snap it when it's right there starting take it straight away take your spiritual fist and beat down on that thing and destroy it in your life in the name of Jesus take authority there are many things that you will have to take authority over that I can't take authority over for you your pastor can't take authority over for you 
you will have to get that revelation by reading God's word, by looking at the word, and then you will have to take that authority yourself in Jesus' name. God bless you. Thanks for listening and thanks for sharing. Bless you.